Colombia. Let's bring in Stephen Goldster. He's the founder of Freeland, that's a global counter-trafficking organisation, and co-chair of the End Pandemics campaign. He joins us via Skype from the Thai capital, Bangkok. Uh, Stephen, this report found that dozens of species that harbour pathogens and can jump to humans uh, were being sold in this wet market. How significant is this report, and should we be surprised by its findings, do you think? Well, it's not a surprise, but it's very significant. It points once again to the uh, strong perils of wildlife trade. I mean, wildlife trade has always been one of the most efficient ways to transmit potentially deadly viruses from nature into urban human populations. But listen, uh, no matter which theory one subscribes to about the origins of COVID-19, whether it's these wild animals in a wet market or wild animals or exotic animals being bred on farms, or if it's from a, an animal, a lab that's been experimenting on wild animals. They all have one common denominator, and that's tampering with wild animals. So we just need to leave these wild animals in their natural home where they play important roles. They're okay. majestic. We can behold them, and we're fine. But you take them, push them, or pull them out of their natural environments, and they become potential sticks of dynamite. Uh, and, Stephen, China seems to have cracked down on these wet markets, for now at least, but many countries across Asia, like Thailand, for instance, where you are, still have them. So how much of a danger do they still pose, do you think? That's right that China has cracked down. It's very hard right now to find these animals for sale. But uh, there are markets still open across Southeast Asia. Uh, governments are thinking about it. But what we're seeing uh, across the world and Southeast Asia and probably in China soon is the, um, the the strength of the money behind this. You know, this is a multi multi billion dollar a year trade. So people are pushing back to relax the markets and allow a legal trade to uh, occur. We have to remember that legal wildlife trade mass illegal trade. It also mass viruses. The viruses don't care if those animals have been traded legally or not. They attach to wild animals that leave nature and can then jump to other animals or directly to people. Uh, Stephen, uh, you mentioned this earlier, but, I mean, does this report bring us any closer uh, to finding out if the virus did indeed come from a wet market or a Chinese laboratory in Wuhan? I think we'll be debating that for years. And like I said, I don't think it matters because the common denominator in all those theories, lab, market, or farm, those are the three theories that all the uh, experts are looking at. Uh, the common denominator there is tampering with wild animals. If, even if it was a lab, those bats did not show up at the lab at the door voluntarily and said, you know, experiment on me. They're, they're taken from their natural habitat, sometimes sold, sometimes picked up by the researchers themselves. And that whole medical industry is, you know, it's part of the wildlife trade too, the legal wildlife trade, which again, mass and illegal trade, but most importantly, it mass viruses. OK, so what you're saying, uh, Stephen, is that uh, this report then pretty much puts the spotlight back uh, on the evils of the animal trade more broadly. So what needs to be done then to stop this? What, what, what do we need to do? Right. So in all those theories, the solution is the same, which is basically stop wildlife trade and stop destruction of nature. The two factors that bring animals into close contact with people when they can shed these viruses to us for which we have no resistance is wildlife trade and also destruction of their homes, usually for in industrial farming. So those are all connected issues. So really, the only long-lasting vaccine here is nature protection. So we need to see the G7 countries and all the other wealthy nations start putting money into nature protection. It's something that's been overlooked for many years. Wildlife trade is just part of that, but also just stopping deforestation. Viruses will continue to jump. This vaccine that we've created now, the different variants, won't work against the next virus. We're just putting expensive Band-Aids on this problem. So nature protection is the ultimate solution. Stephen Goldstone, good to get your thoughts. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us.